Okay, this is a this is a video. It's going to be reasonably quick, I guess, under fifteen minutes. This is a video about uh, planars and uh, what's coming, pretty much. That's what this is. Uh, this is a frequency response graph. I don't know what unit it is. I'm glad because I don't. I can see problems with it just looking at it, but I don't know what it's from. But we're going to take a look at it uh, in a few minutes, so I'll take that out. Original oldest design for IMs are uh, the single dynamic driver. Um, the the original. This is this one. I'm not sure of the material that was made. Um, the old speaker cones that you had and floor speakers at home. Uh, paper or something that was put in these um, most popular would be uh, like plastic that is used for coca-cola bottles but a lot thinner which is called mylar uh, pet which is like a petroleum basically oil-based uh, plastic in a very thin membrane and that's the diaphragm of the driver inside here um, good thing about this um, it is easy to make, um, comfort to the listener because it's a, it's a sound that people have heard a lot when it comes to, um, stuff that you put in your ears. They've been doing this for so long that people have gotten used to the fact that sometimes sets like this that have, uh, kind of bassy will have uh, not so good mids, what we call the V, um, and the treble maybe will be elevated to compensate for that V. Also, the driver is very dependent on the housing. Um, you could take a driver from this one, which has a metal like a graphite, and put it into a wood uh, case, and it would sound different. So the, the tuning uh, of the driver is uh, you, it's not switchable. Taking drivers from one and putting it into another are not. So you could do that with a set of BA. You could take a BA universal and put, put them in customs uh, and that would be probably fine doing that with a dynamic driver would be I've done it I've taken dynamic drivers out of headphones and put them in other headphones and they sounded completely different uh, I've wasted a lot of time doing that there is a lot of a lot of the tuning has to do with the enclosure and the materials of the enclosure so the benefits of this is it's very easy to manufacture it's very common people know about it um, the strengths, the weaknesses. For me, I'm going to focus on bass, uh, on all of this stuff. The bass on a dynamic driver can be elevated and uh, you reach a certain point. Put this here. In the bass area, in low bass, sub bass, the more that you raise this, the more that the mid frequency becomes veiled. Um, while it might not actually change the frequency response, the amount of distortion that you hear because of the elevated bass because you're dependent on a single driver is going to create a veil in this area, which is going to make you have to raise this area. And you're going to make a V more than you had already to try to fix what you had. So um, getting a set that's bass elevated is bad because it's not really going to get much better than that. Getting a set that's pretty much flat here where you can elevate it um, until you have some problems with the mids it would be better which is why I have the Sony EX as my my favorites um, they're not gonna come in the picture because I can't detach I can detach them but I'm not gonna do that They're too much of a pain so that the single dynamic is you, you can get the bass really good um, but you're gonna have problems with the mids and most people have resigned themselves that that's the way that it is and so other technology has arisen um, because of that, so I'll take the dynamic driver out. What what they did um, to try to remedy that was they, they, they made hybrids, which are a dynamic driver with a balanced armature. Um, they would use a dynamic driver which would elevate, you could focus the base here um, just for the dynamic driver and then you could have ba balanced armatures, one or two, usually two, um, that would take over for maybe the mids, one each, and one for the treble, or they would both be tasked with taking from the mids forward. Um, problem with this design, and it's the one that I'm least fond of, shockingly, because the ASG 2.5s were a really popular set, um, there's a cohesive problem, 
And if you listen to music that has a lot of very finite detail and you listen to it at lower volume, it sounds like sometimes that there's information missing. Um, I'm not going to talk about this particular set. This is a good set, but it's got very, very airy high. It's got like a single 10K peak on this set um, because of the way that it's tuned. The mids are okay. Um, the bass is not that great. Um, so the hybrid idea was to take the problem that was associated with the dynamic driver and to to fix it, to say, okay, we're going to put the dynamic driver, we're going to just task it with the lower end, and then we're going to take this one, and we're going to do, we're going to put that driver in here to take care of this, and the problem that this was having with this and this, we're going to dedicate drivers to them itself. Um, there's some very expensive hybrids. Um, I've never heard one, including Kumatate Labs, which is uh, about $2,000, that did it as good as a well-tuned single dynamic like the EX-1000. An EX-1000, very lightly EQ'd, sounds better than any hybrid I've heard. So the, the idea behind it was to fix the flaw in this, though I've never heard this done in the way um, that was intended, because it would be what I would pick, because I would want something where I could elevate the bass to crazy levels and, and not have the mid penalty. The driver in, in this will suffer distortion earlier because it's usually a smaller driver and the 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 balanced armatures will sometimes be crazily toned i've, I've just not heard uh ever and i've heard them a lot so please don't suggest something I, I live in japan i hear all kinds of stuff i've just not ever heard a hybrid that kind of nailed it like made me think i was listening to a dynamic driver which is the goal and I was able to boost up the bass without feeling any kind of uh, effect on the mids and treble. I would be able to do that, but before I ever did that, it would seem like there was points of the frequency which were not missing or kind of missing, like parts of songs where I would listen to them and uh, they didn't sound right. It would literally sound like something was missing. And this was not this set. This was every single hybrid I've ever listened to, whether it was bass target audience of the ASG 2.5, which was the Kumatate, Labs, um, Canon, um, KL Ref. Uh, I've, I've heard all of the, the price levels of these, and they never fixed it. So dynamic driver, the problem with that, how do we fix it? Well, we'll go with a, we'll go with a hybrid. No, that, that, didn't, that didn't work. Um, years ago, a few, not, not that many, um, balanced armature drivers started to become um, quite popular because what they could do is they could take this is not there's there are 12 drivers inside this this is a 64 audio u12 um, if you look at the size so this has got two BAs in it and a dynamic driver and this has got 12 BAs and you think well that looks kind of big well um, this is a this is a single dynamic driver. It's bigger than that, so it, this is actually quite small to consider that there's twelve drivers in here, and there's one dynamic driver inside of here. This is definitely smaller. This is very very small. Um, get these out of here. These are what I would consider to be monitoring IEMs by design. These are the type of things that professional like a Beyonce and people wear and they use, you know, 10, 12, 16. And they do that because this is perfect, especially at m low to mid level listening, because your four bass I BAs, your four mid, your four treble will create via tubing and uh, passive or uh, non-passive um, crossover uh, create the ability to focus on all three of the major ranges of the frequency which would be bass, mid, and treble without really losing any one or the other. The problem with this is, if there is a problem, is if you elevate the bass a lot on a BA set, it has what I call tone out, and somebody who makes BAs actually came into a thread that I was talking about them and said that they have an industry term for that, 
when you elevate the balanced armature base BAs to a certain point, they just kind of tone out. They start producing what sounds like a single tone, um, and it and it begins to overwhelm everything. So if, for a bass head, this wouldn't be something you would want. For somebody that likes a lot of bass, audiophile, sure. Beyond that, no, that that won't work because you will get to a point where when you elevate the bass, that this will create a tone um, that will affect everything that follows after that. So this is not my opinion. This is something that was chimed in by somebody that makes these and said that laughed at it. He actually did LOL, that's da da da, and he called it a name that they say in the business for what happens to an armature driver when it is overwhelmed and it just starts to horn, turns into a horn basically. Um, so these are fantastic, and, and I'm, I mean, these are that's proven by the fact that. Um, people that are professional and they've got stage hands and they've got 15 techs in the back with the mixing decks, they're listening to each other using these because um, they're not going to miss anything. And, and they're not bass heads and not, not toning out. Um, I, I like to go that way. So if there were a weak point with this, that would be it. You, you will get to a point where uh, this will become overwhelmed with your input um, of elevation for the bass. So... Um, fantastic in every sense until you start to play with it in that way now recently the latest tech is planar <coughs> i can't remember what size this is 38 or something like that this is the audis odyssey i20 um i sign 20 or i20 uh this is the me Point one by uh, Unique Melody. Um, I love both of these. I love this for its general sound. Um, this, if you don't have a, a cable that's designed for iDevices, which has basically got a DSP to adjust it. So let me get into this, what this video is about. Th there's a, This thread has maybe 10 pages on it, which is absolutely stunning because it's one, it's one of the most beautiful IEMs um, I've ever seen and the cable is jewelry it's absolutely unbelievable um, I cannot wreck this enough this is uh, this is uh, $250 or $300 or something like that um, and look at the size of this thing something that nobody's ever talked about in any of the reviews now is the fact that all of this area that you've got right here when it's in your ear and it's got a very good insertion depth, um, the bass vibration can be felt almost all this entire area. So you're not just getting bass through this tube, you're getting it through the plastic that surrounds it. In You're feeling it on the side of your ear, which is unique because usually you've got bass in your ear or on your head, whether it's a headphone or it's an IEM. Um, this will give you both, which is fantastic. Um, this doesn't give me the same sense, but it's got a... Uh, this requires a DSP. This this doesn't. But these both share uh, something that's very interesting, and it's causing a, a delay in acceptance by the audio community, and I'll explain what that is, what I think it is. At 1K, which would be right here, and at 9K, which would be right here, in this area... of the frequency, there is something going wrong. There is a harmonic event occurring. And uh, I talked about bass before and I did a bass video about how to EQ a bass and how you can, you can multi-peak the bass here if you want. You do a notch to give a psychoacoustic separation between the drum, the kick drum, drums, and a bass guitar because they sometimes have the exact same frequency at the exact same moment and to give the psychoacoustic illusion to separate those you notch around the point where the fundamental and the harmonic bass separate which is between 330 and 500 and you do that and you actually get this kind of sense of the, it's the same reason they put peaks and treble to give a sense of space on something that is jammed in your ear canal and you can't possibly sense space you get the illusion of it psychoacoustics it, it's it, it works they've been doing it for 
since they knew how sound works. Um, they do it with all of these things to, to varying levels of success. Um, so the psych it, there there are fundamental and harmonic ranges of uh, of uh, instruments of uh, the human voice. It seems like the human voice, male vocals in particular, to me, um, this area between one and nine. So I can take this set and I can elevate the bass all the way to the top of this chart, and it will not affect the clarity of the mids, which is unique to this tech only. Dr dynamic drivers don't do this, uh, hybrids don't do this, and BAs don't do this. Whether it's 1 or 12 BAs, they won't do that. These planners will do that. I can take these, elevate the bass really high, hear the mids as clear as I want them to be, and I got to put in work right here. There has to be some kind of adjustments done here. Whether it's it seems like one K is a very very sensitive slider. Um, on these, it's the lowest of my frequencies. Whereas five hundred to three thirty to five hundred is my dip, uh, my notch. For these, it's actually one K. Where's my notch is? Um, so that's a that's that's a result of the the planar driver. Um, this has a, a pronounced cavity uh, around 4K, if I recall, and which is, falls in this zone and needs to be extremely boost. So the problem with these two is that people are not accustomed to the way that they are to EQ them. I have seen videos and I have seen reviews of multi-BA or dynamic drivers that cost over $2,000, and the reviewer, very well known, multiple people have said, I sense a slight recess in the mids and female vocals, but nothing to be concerned with, et cetera, et cetera. And we're talking $2,000, because people have just accepted that that's what's going to happen. Um, and I'm rolling my eyes because I'm thinking, what, you know, two grand recess mids? Get the fuck out of here. No way. Um, these, these will not give you any recessed mids um if they do sound recessed out the box and that's the way that they tune can you that's another thing about the planars these are the most responsive to eq of all of the tech uh dynamic drivers hybrids uh ba uh earbuds um i forgot to put the earbuds in here but i'm going to make a point to put these in here these are five dollar monk uh and i want to say these are awesome um these are the stuff that we're most familiar with originally when the i devices first came out and uh uh, Lee, Crazy Lee from Venture Electronics donated $900 to uh, Mo Dogs, the VE Clan family donated $900 to Mo Dogs. Um, go fund me. The good fucking dude is outstanding. Good job, man. Absolute fucking respect. Capital R E S P E C T to you, bro. Um, the, these are, I'll talk about these in another video. These are portable on the go. Not isolating, um, not supposed to be, but this is for a different video. Um, these are absolutely mind-blowingly fantastic, each in their own way, and the lack of embracing by the community that I'm a part of is stunning because they're not getting the point here. Number one, I can elevate the bass, and I'm not getting the penalty of the mids that I will get in every single other design form every single other design form an increase in the bass do you like more bass that's not the point uh, i can i can raise this bass and not have this affected the clarity level for detail and uh, 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 something that was mixed with multiple layers a woman's voice uh, behind another woman's voice uh, uh syncopatic uh drums um all kinds of stuff going on at the same time and layered in multiple levels on it, let's say like a Kendrick Lamar track. N nothing comes close to these, either one of these, to hear that. And uh, that is taking account that I have to figure out w w where in here I got to pull. Usually we say boost wide, cut narrow. Remember that rule, boost wide, cut narrow. If you're going to lift something up, you usually want to lift it with a wide band. If you cut it, you usually want to you want to make that a narrow uh, cut, if, 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 if that's what you're going to do. Where my boost and cut in this area is is something I'm still learning because I'm still learning about the tech. But as far as I'm concerned, these two IEM, I know that they've got a new flagship, but 
flagship don't mean shit to me. Um, these are the two finest IEMs I've ever had in my possession. And if, in the past three nights, I've been, I thought, I bet I got to do a video, man. Um, th these are better than anything you have if you don't have these. I can hear details in songs that you can't hear. Um, the only thing that comes close to these is my EX-1000s, and that's because I, I have such a personal bias to them, and the adjustment to them for me is very automatic. I can pick up any DAP with any kind of EQ and automatically set it to exactly what I want, which is to increase the bass a little bit, which is where I would increase the bass. I would increase the 1.5 and the 2.5 notches, which is the harmonic extensions of the fundamental of the bass, guitar. That's all I do. I leave everything else of an EX-1000 alone, so I'm so familiar with how to EQ that. And their performance is so stunning that I love them more than anything, the EX-1000s. Those, those don't have the clarity and resolution properties of planar IEMs. These are a pair of the finest things that you can put in your ear right now. But you've got to put work in here, and this is something that's going on right now, um, how to fix this. And you're thinking, why, why should I have to fix this? Um, w what don't you have to fix? Seriously, dynamic drivers, um, if they're very expensive ones that are recessed. Campfire, uh, CA, they have some. Uh, and the people have said, you know, they're a little bright, they're a little thin, there's a little thinness in here. And you know, those things are over $1,000. Um, balanced armature drivers, I could go on and on. They're, they're, you can't tell me a type of driver that doesn't have its weak points and we're talking expensive so forget the fifty dollar stuff uh, i'm talking thousand dollars and over there is not a dynamic driver there's not a balanced armature set there's not a hybrid set that doesn't have weak points so this is welcome to the club it's got weak points they seem to be focused in a certain area and if that is resolved which i'm working on now this is pretty much set uh this i'm still working on it's in here it seems to be 1K has got to be the lowest point of the buildup. And what follows after 1K is what I'm working on right now. But even that, even in the process of trying to um, resolve the issue of the planar, the clarity of the playback is already superior to anything. So the, today is uh, October 24th, 2017, and this, these, this has 10 pages. This has people bitching and complaining. Someday I'm going to link back to this when everybody's all happy and that there'll still be issues with planar because I think it's related to people with headphones have said, you know, the dampening and this is not something that's going to go away. People are going to get adjusted and become okay with it. There'll be multiple companies that are going to sell it um, and they'll all have slight issues depending on the way that they're designed and the size of the membrane uh, of the planar driver. But th these are not the most high resolution clear, flexible by EQ type of drivers on the market right now is ridiculously false. They are. These are absolutely fantastic. I will be reviewing each one of these individually, and I'm going to compare the two of them because they're absolutely fantastic. I love them both. Thank you for watching. Any questions you want in the, in the comment section?